in question two, you've got a quadratic in x, um, which also involves some constant k, um, where k is real. We're told this quadratic equation has no real roots. Immediately, we should be thinking and writing down no real roots means that the discriminant b squared minus 4ac must be less than zero, i.e. in our quadratic formula, See if we think it'd be square root b squared minus 4ac, the bit within the square root, all over 2a, the bit inside the square root um, has to be negative, and that leads us to imaginary roots or no real roots here. That's our key thing for, for one of the marks. Now, whenever we're solving a quadratic equation, we're always looking for it in the form um, ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. Um, so we need to turn this equation that we're given and just take everything over to one side to get that. So 3x squared minus 5x plus k minus 2 equals 0. From here I can see that uh, a equals 3, b equals minus 5 and c is k minus 2. Um, Putting that into my uh, information given that b squared minus 4ac is less than zero. So just plugging that in, minus 4 times 3 times k minus 2 is less than zero. 25 minus 12k plus 24 is less than zero. Uh, add 12k. So on this side I've got 49. Add the 12k, 49 over 12 is less than k. Check the question. The equation has no real roots. Yep. Find the range of possible values for k. And here we've got an inequality um, that gives us that range. Um, OK, the mark scheme for this, four marks. It's on the next slide. And we see you actually get one method mark for turning the equation into um, this what they call a three term quadratic um, where we've got it all to one side and we're looking for that kind of form so that's one method mark there um, your next method mark is this um, knowledge that no real roots means the discriminant is less than zero um, and then fairly straightforward, really. Once you've got that, the rest of it should drop out. It should be some nice, easy marks.